Hello, I'm Deborah Holt, and this is Life Streams. I'm so glad you tuned in today. You have an interesting opportunity here. I have some amazing guests with me, Carol Jontree. Uh, Carol is on the Illinois Capital Prayer Team, She uh, HAPN. She is also has a history of governmental anointing on her, served on the county board, and I'll let you share a little more of go into some of the things you do if you want. And then Anita Mason, she's returning. We just had her a few weeks ago, and Anita is a marriage and family therapist. She is uh, got her doctorate. She is, uh, both of these are amazing, amazing ministers. So it's really a privilege to have you guys share with the audience today and with me. And so I'm really excited you're here. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you for inviting us. Appreciate yes, it. It's our pleasure. Um, we're going to talk about prayer first, and I'm going to just uh, let these ladies, I'm going to give them as much time as I can. Carol, now you have been with the Capital Prayer Team, the Heartland Apostolic Prayer Network, for quite some time. Um, tell us a little bit about that, what, it, what that is, and what you do, and maybe how long you've been doing it, and some of the things that are tied in with that that you've done, because I know you're actually operating more, going out a lot to other states, and so go, in, go into a little bit of that for us. Well, there's a group of intercessors that go to the Capitol uh, once a month and uh, pray there on the Capitol if we can. If it's we're not able to get a room there, we do it over the phone. There's also an intercession that goes up at 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, intercessors across the state from the south, far south up to the north. Uh, and we pray for a while on the phone in the morning. And so. Um, just uh, we we pray for everybody when we go to the Capitol. We pray for everybody. There, you know, there uh, uh, that we're mandated to do that. It says pray for those that are above you, that are your leaders. And um, and to me, having served in government, once you're elected, you represent everybody. Mm -hmm. True. You may run on, and, and when you run, that's so people know where you're coming from, know what you're for, but you really represent the people that you serve. So you have to have a connection with them. And um, I, I really ap appreciate being able to go over there and pray for them. It's, it is a neat mm -hmm. opportunity. And you pray for the president a lot. I know yes. you use social media to promote things and uh, Anita you the same I've seen you put yeah. things on you guys both have a real passion for our president and uh, talk to me a little bit we'll start with you Anita and then Carol you do the same um, about what you think God's doing with this president that we have right now well one of the things that I want to stress is please go vote vote yes. vote vote that's vote. true everybody yes. I want everybody to vote and I I do believe that we're in a, in a really really special time uh, I think the, the Lord is revealing to us uh, his power and his pathway right now and I think that like Carol and her prayer team and, and undergirding the um, the uh, political side getting the political side of it done and 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 then the other part of it is the rest of us need to be and I, I pray political prayers too but not as often as Carol does and, but the rest of us need to be really undergirding the body of Christ because um, I feel like we're coming into a season where there is going to be a real breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Breakthrough for our country, breakthrough for the nation, breakthrough for Israel. And I think the path that we're taking right now is heading us there. It's got to take the people, there's got to be prayer, there's got to be um, just a lot of things that we need to um, we need to labor before the Lord. We were just talking about prayer before we started. And, and uh, Carol and I was talking about prayer, and, and there's so many things about prayer that is so awesome. And uh, But I believe also, when we were talking about, we, have to, we do need to petition God for everything, but we also need to begin to declare those things that we want to see. We heard a minister yesterday in church talking about that, how important it was to declare something because he said whatever you declare which we've heard before but when you hear it again and again and again and then you hear it a little different way each time but i like what he said because <coughs> when you declare something you have planted the seed and you have let that seed begin to grow and grow until it's multiple until it's fruitful and multiplies and sometimes we expect an answer right away but it's it's in that it's in that growth state it's in that seed stage and so i do that but um but when we're talking about prayer, I found this in 
and my little Bibles are just sitting here. Um, what is prayer? Prayer is a cry, a conversation, it's communion, it's a degree, decree, it's a declaration, it's faith, it's belief, it's grace and mercy, it's dialogue with God, it's music, hope, worship, all types of suggestion, offering, it's all the things, you know. Prayer is just not encapsulated in just our communication. It's all these That's things. That's good. That's really good. Well, Carol, I know you are a prayer warrior and an intercessor. I've seen the fruit of that. Um, talk, talk to us a little bit about um, the types of intercession you like to do and uh, some of the things maybe that, that you've been agreeing with people on your on the prayer team, the morning phone call uh, for right now and, and where you think things are going and anything else you want to share. Okay. And how they think President Trump, what do they think President Trump is headed with all this? Well, I believe we did all that you said on that card. Mm -hmm. I believe we've been crying out and saying, Lord, we have to, something has to be done. Something, especially in Chicago, um, the bloodshed that's on the ground in different cities of, of Illinois, we've cried out. And the Lord gave us a shift. <laughs> he gave us this president. Oh, amen. Who it is a shift. prophetic words from different prophets blessing. said mm -hmm. that he's a Cyrus. He is mm -hmm. like a bull in a china shop. Mm -hmm. He is a, a what a wrecking ball. Mm -hmm. And so every mountain, including the church, is being wrecked. <laughs> you know, the, it, it's a it's a shift that's happening, and so what happens? What happens when we ask and pray for somebody's salvation, and they change? Okay, we're we're glad they changed, but then it affects the relationship a little bit more. We can't get away with things we got away with before, and so then we're not quite sure that we wanted our prayer answered. So the first thing about prayer now is thanksgiving for what He's given us. And I, can I read Isaiah? Sure. Because I think sure. this is this has been no, my prayer together. for the president, for myself, for for everyone. It's Isaiah 11, 1 through uh, five. It says, "There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse." The bells are ringing as I'm reading this. Church bells. <laughs> This, yes, church bells. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight is in the fear of the Lord. Father, I thank you. I'll, I thank you that you, that our president's yes, delight yeah. is in the fear of the yes. Lord. Mm -hmm. And so those that work with him, Father, I thank you that he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. Father, I'm praying that for us, that we don't judge by what we see, that, that, um, or, uh, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, what he hears with his ears, but he's listening to what you're saying. But with the righteousness, with righteousness, he shall judge the poor. And I had a revelation this morning, the poor are those that don't know him. The poor are those that don't know about the Holy Spirit, know about salvation, know about healing, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And this is, this is for us as well as for our president. He shall, we shall strike the earth with the rod of our mouth. That's what the scriptures, they actually strike the earth with the rod of our mouth. And don't you think that means those words that we were talking when you declare something? Yes. Because our, our, our mouth becomes a rod. It becomes a weapon. It becomes a sword. It's and like, it you can declare it over the land. Over yeah. the land. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. we're to take the, we're, Genesis says, we're to uh, take dominion, subdue the earth, and multiply. That's, that, was, that was at the very beginning in Genesis. And so when Jesus went to heaven, he said, and occupy till I come back. So the, with Christians, we're to occupy our territory. Mm -hmm. And, and that then, word occupy, yeah. what would that mean to you, that word yeah. occupy? Protect the land. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's safe, guarded. Does that mean we have to live on that land where we occupy? No, because it says where are we? Because I'm, I'm planning to talk about <laughs> well, <man. laughs> You two are all over, so you can, you can occupy from lots of places. Yes. Well, yeah. the Bible says where you place your feet, you know, where, where, you, yeah. where you go, yeah. where you place your feet. 
feet? What is it? We can every place ground. you place the sole of your feet, there I will be in the midst of you. There you are. Yeah. And so actually, we have planted something there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then it says, with the breath of your lips, we shall slay the wicked. Okay, we can just blow them out of the way. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, and righteousness shall be the belt of our loins, and faithfulness the belt of our waist. Mm -hmm. And so those are two things, righteousness and faithfulness. And, and the Lord is all about justice. He is the one. It's mm -hmm. because of the blood of the Lamb that, that, that we have this authority. And so that's my prayer for the That's beautiful. President. I love that. I, I didn't remember that part about the faithfulness being our belt. You know, I, I just kind of didn't notice that part so much in there before. I like that. You yeah. know, because God is really into faithfulness. Look how oh, faithful absolutely. he is. You know, and, and whether we're faithful or not, it just means so much to him. It's like we're doing it unto him, even if we're faithful to our friends when we say we're going to do something or our spouse or whatever. There's that two, faithful two words, faithful and righteousness, because mm -hmm. what is righteousness is right standing before God, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, we do. We want to be faithful in our right standing before the Lord. And one of the things about this president, remember he's not a politician. He's a businessman. <laughs> yes, he's he a is. Father. Okay. And everything he said, he's done. Which shocks people. I know. Okay. Because it's well, it very makes some difficult. people mad because, <laughs> because they didn't get to do it first. Um, right. And because they didn't do it. You know, I think that's one of the I things. Think it's a conviction they didn't I do, do it. I do. I believe it. I believe that some of the people, I'm just hearing someone talk on the news last night about him being, uh, them being so angry. And I think they're angry because, again, they weren't able to do what President Trump has done, you know. Right. I really think, too, it's a conflict of thrones oh absolutely you know, oh, it's yes. a, you, you've heard that term probably by other yeah. people but it, it is so obvious that it is a conflict of thrones it's Battle just two conflicting evil. thrones and yeah it is it's just like because some of the stupidest things make people so mad you know he'll do some little well, thing don't you think too that here's what i, I have a different way i look at it too and i'm seeing this in other things too but it reveals the nature within the person mm -hmm. Because we, he is really stirring up a oh, lot of things boy, in people yeah. that they hide. They've hidden from other people, and they've hidden from the media, and they've hidden even even some of the politicians are are saying things, and it's almost like it's just erupting naturally out of them. And you say, oh, I didn't know that guy had that kind of attitude yeah. about that, or or you know he felt this way about Long that. Long before he got elected, I started calling him a John Wayne because I said, I don't understand why everybody's so mad because everybody thought it was great when John Wayne was kind of oh, like, yeah. you know, he was kind of a rough and tough go in there and get the job done and everybody loved John Wayne and thought it was great, yeah. but then this guy comes in with kind of a John Wayne approach and nobody liked it. I didn't understand that, but I, he kind of reminds me of like a John Wayne. But it's you know what? That's the kind of, what I would say, that's the kind of man that the Lord chose. He wanted somebody that would go in there and just say what it needed to be done. He may not always do it in the best way, but he knew that Donald Trump would be the only man that had this the courage and the stamina and the strength to just to go ahead and do it and not worry about what the people were going to say. I now, think granted, they'd have shredded him. If oh, he was a mousy little timid well, they guy, they would have yeah, shredded would have him from afar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he wouldn't have lasted. Yeah, I mean, the people's words would have got to him. Words yeah. bring forth life and death and powers in his body. And somehow, some way, there's that shield well, he's between been him and the words he that have been, been said. Well, you know, him. he's so wise to pick a prayer team and keep this prayer team. He has those six pastors that he oh, just yeah. calls and has them Isn't come. I know. Awesome? Yeah, Kenneth Copeland's one and Paula White. I don't know who the rest are. But, uh, well, I think uh, Lance Wall now said yes, he's been, been So he's one. But there's three. But powerful people that are really believers of the word. And he's so smart to call them when things are going a little crazy. He calls them and they go in there. I thought that was so wise. You know, I mean, half of the wisdom is just knowing when you don't have enough power or you don't have the answer to, you know, you need to get help and have Frank Franklin Graham's also a consultant for him, too. That's good. You know, and he's, he's, he's just an awesome man. Well, the pastor that was just released from Turkey came in and uh, uh, the day after he was released and asked if he could pray for the president. The president said yes. And they said that is the first time that's happened in the yeah. White House they to be broadcast. That was awesome. Um, and it was, was even awesome. written in the paper 
I did see a picture of it, but I'll have to Google yeah, the actual video. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I haven't watched the video. I didn't so, see the pictures. But but when he ran, he let people pray for him. Yeah. He did. And he just, he just is, a, in, in a lot of ways, he's a very humble mm -hmm. type person. Uh, uh, how many politicians would let that be videoed, yeah. let alone in person? Yeah. 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 Well, What's that scripture, wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove? He does have a tender heart inside of him. He does. But he's wise, too. He's been around the block a few times, and he's, you know. <laughs> you know, in the boundary class, they always say that you have to be able to say no before you say yes. And he has good, he's got he's boundaries. He, he knows when to put that boundary up and when to let it down. He knows when to say yes and when to say no. Now, we know he's not perfect in all that. No, no. But the good news is, is there are so many good things that are coming out of this. And I was thinking also, the men that he's brought home from other countries. Yes. I remember, I have got this in my doc, one of my uh, um, journals that I, I wrote. And I think I put it on media somewhere that when uh, our past president was president, I said, God, I would not go out of the country. I would not go anywhere because I felt like if I went anywhere and I was stuck somewhere and somebody had me, I, a president wouldn't bring us back. This president will go after you and bring you back. Yeah, yeah. he'd fight for you. You know, there's so many things that have happened. Um, and Carol, I remember you listening to Kim Clement a lot. And, oh, yes. And I, I did, had, back then, I wasn't really that knowledgeable about his prophecies or anything. But didn't he prophesy a lot of this? Oh, he, he did. did. He did. I he prophesied sure. Trump. Uh, so did um, Chuck Pierce. There, I mean, there were quite a few. Lance Wall now did. Um, it's it's really amazing the things that that Ken Clement has prophesied. Uh, he even prophesied about um, uh, Korea, the, that it would become one state. He prophesied that. Um, uh, Puerto Rico would be the 51st state of our nation. Uh, Kim Clement was just really, uh, he prophesied California. I did not with, know how yeah. spiritual and how kingdom he was until recently. I've started watching a few of those. Uh, his daughter has now taken yeah. over his ministry and I've been watching a few of her, her showing clips and then talking about it and she was there and the mantle was passed to her when he passed. and. So it's been really neat, but I thought, now I understand why Carol liked him so much. He's so kingdom. I mean, he's, he's very kingdom. Very kingdom. He actually saw the, um, uh, when the, the, the beheading and the killing of the children in Iraq and, and the places by in ISIS. the Middle East by ISIS, he actually saw that uh, in a vision on one of his programs. Mm -hmm. And you could tell he was really affected by it. Um, but God, God is just, God is just so good because He does speak to His prophets. And one of the things that that a recent prophecies over Donald Trump was that he would, he's operated as a prophet. You know how he'll get up and say, "Well, this is what it is," and everybody will yell at him and say, "It's not true," and it turns out, yes, it is true. That, that is true. Wow. So he's been operating as a prophet. Mm -hmm. But they said in this next two years. He'll be operating more as an evangelist, and in his meetings, there will be prayer, there'll be healing, there'll wow. be miracles. Um, That's a great prophecy. That is a great pro I mean, to think that, w and, and the other thing um, on um, Mark Taylor, who had a lot of prophecies mm -hmm. on him, um, uh, talked about, and there was a pro prophetic word that he would disciple the nations. And you're seeing it, and you're seeing it live, day by day, it's where a nation yes. will say, it's "No, amazing. we're not going to do that." Look, he's made a great, a, and and this is really scripture. That's what people don't realize. We're just thinking it's tariffs, but what he's doing is we pay a penalty if our tariffs aren't right. If if the if the boundaries, that's one of the first things about boundaries mm -hmm. and Proverbs, yeah, you, the, the scales have to be balanced. And so when we enter into, and whether we're the victim or whether we're taking advantage of somebody else, there's a curse that comes back on your nation. And so what he's saying to the nation is, I want us to be prosperous. I want us to be great. So I want to, every, I want to have a win-win. Well, that's the first president we've had that's wanted to have a win-win. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they feel guilty because we, God's blessed our nation, but above all, what 
Donald Trump did that no other president did was recognize Jerusalem as the yes. capital, yes. which shifted it powerful. Everything. It really did. That was a huge, huge thing. Yeah. That was Very a blessing for America. It that really was. was. It, and you know, another thing about Donald America. Trump, too, and people talked about this, how intuitive he is. Mm -hmm. He seems to get feelings about things and things, oh, right? Yes. And so when you talk about that in a spiritual way, he has discernment. And he had had that gift of discernment because he does seem to know where to balance something, where to put it here, and where to put it there, and where to pull back. I'm not saying he's always perfect, but if you want to know what discernment really is, it's it's or intuitive is, it's really discernment. And he seems to know. He just seems to he goes he goes a lot by feel. Now that's mm -hmm. unusual for a man that say has they say has no feelings. Yeah, I think it's discernment. I think it is God has given him a gift of discernment. He, he does have you know? that. So yeah. it's it's really the Lord, but he's he's following it. I mean, he's he following is, yeah. that discernment of the Lord, which is like a, the first president in. Now I remember my I was very young, but I remember my dad thought that JFK yeah. was a really good man and was sensitive to the other leaders and a lot of these things I'm seeing him. I kind of vaguely remember my dad saying what he liked about JFK. I like JF Kennedy. I really thought he was a great man and I do believe he had good discernment. And he was he used wisdom. You know, he maybe not have been as bold as Donald Trump. Oh Donald Trump is way more bold. Has that, yep. He has that bold. But you know it's kinda like a sword's two edged, you know, but he's good with that sword and gets it said what needs to be said. But sometimes when you're swinging it back, you know, to get your next hit, you may go a little far and say something that maybe isn't what we would want him to say. Well, you know, but you know, that's just part of Jeremiah wow. says, be bold, be strong, be courageous for the Lord of God is with you. Yeah. And then he's bold, he's strong, he is, he is courageous because he just steps right out there and says what he wants. Yeah. And how he thinks. And he may say something that's wrong, it's not Well, perfect, he but does, we do know that. <laughs> but you know what, he's human. I mean, we're human, he's human. He's, it's just that humanity shows through sometimes, just like with us, you know. Yeah. One of my constant prayers for him is put a watch over before his mouth yeah. and keep the door on his lips so that he'll know what to say and when to say it. Yeah. I probably ought to be praying for Twitter, but I don't. You know. <laughs> and he tweets a lot. He does tweet he a lot. He does tweet. But we love him and we're we supportive. And, and we're I'll tell you what, yeah. if you want God to bless America, we need to vote him in another time. God bless America. Because I don't think yeah. he's done with no, what no, he's, he's supposed to do. Done. Everybody go vote, go vote. I mean, it's vote. a miracle what he, I mean, he has probably 98% of the media against him. Yeah. Okay, so he's constantly being attacked, constantly, constantly. being attacked. I, I have, sometimes I have a vision of the angels with Netza trying to, Catch the words that come against words. you. Yeah, yeah, like Nets. Nets, yeah. 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 Just, you know, you can't do that. But it's by the grace of God and the mercy, great grace and the yeah. mercy of the Lord, yeah. that look what he has changed, the oh, economy first. So much. The economy, and one of the prophetic words about him was once the economy changed, the spiritual atmosphere. And now there's so many people being set free from old ways of thinking uh, and being uh, uh, almost being allowed to have a creative side and do things a little bit different than we've done it before. Um, I, I'm just, ju I, we're, we're really blessed to be yeah. living in this season. What a day to be alive. You know, people say, oh, but it's so wicked. Oh, the dark no, is getting great, darker. Yeah. The dark is yeah. getting darker. But we but get the lighter. The, the light getting is stronger. getting lighter. So, you know, we're seeing signs, miracles, wonders, supernatural things, healings. I have seen more in the last year than I saw my whole previous life put together. So it is an exciting time to be alive. Well, I think we probably only have just a few minutes left, so maybe if each one of you would like to take, maybe you, Anita, and then you, Carol, take, maybe if you just have a minute to say something to the camera, to the people, what would you want them to know? I want them to know, I, I, I'll tell you what, I never grew up, I never matured, I never knew anything about life or family or anything else until I came to the Lord, until I until I turned my life over to Him and said that, you know, Lord, I'll serve you all the days of my life. And it was a covenant I made with Him. That's the only way that I've ever been able to grow. That's the only way I've ever been able to mature. That's the only way I've been able to have success in any part of my life. And the main thing is, I have an identity that I did not have before. I don't feel like I had an identity until the Lord came into my life. And at the same time, did I have an identity that very moment? No. But He brought 
and he developed and he brought me into a place where as I grew and as I matured, I became the person he wanted me to be, that I have an identity, not, of my, not only of my own, but I have an identity in him. Yes. And until, you know, so I, That's good. to me, growth and maturity is no the Lord is not going to be able to grow and mature. He offers something no one else can offer. That's right. Well, Carol, what would you like to say to the people? Uh, there's, there's a lot, but the one thing is we've all done things that we wouldn't want people to know. We've all probably committed a crime that would be considered a felony at some time or another in our life that we could be judged but it's by the grace of God that we're forgiven. And uh, once we realize about ourselves, we can have mercy on others. And it's having mercy on just what Anita was saying. It is all about the Lord, because our identity comes from Him. Absolutely. And then what He gives us, then we're free to give to others. We're free to extend grace and mercy to others. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times when I really get upset about something, I'll ask the Lord, Father, how do you see this? How, what, you know, I'm upset. And he'll show me a wound. He'll show me a baby or a three-year-old. That person's just acting like they're three mm -hmm. because something happened to them at three. Mm -hmm. And so it gives me then the opportunity to extend grace and mercy. Because mm -hmm. Jesus came, died, he, when he died on the cross, he was standing. He wasn't a victim, he was standing. Mm -hmm. He laid his life down with joy for all of us. And then he went to hell. And then he took captivity captive and he brought his blood up and set it on the mercy seat in heaven. And that's where he is today, interceding for us. And so we can join him in interceding for our nation, for our family, for our community, for our friends, for our church, for the education, for business. So we're back to prayer again. We're back to prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of prayer, um, I'll wrap this up in just a second. I want you to um, pray or make declarations for our country. Just pray for the election. Oh, and okay. Just a short prayer. A short prayer. I mean, whatever. Whatever you feel like to pray. Father, I ask that you open the book in heaven that the Ancient of Days wrote about the United States of America and that you have the angels read it out. I want what you've written about America to come to pass. Any books written about America by men, by uh, the enemy, Father, that's not according to your will, erase it by the blood of the Lamb yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. And I have been going around declaring, decreeing and declaring that we will take the House and the Senate and my husband yeah. said, oh, I don't know yes. about that. And I said, yes, yeah. <laughs> I declare we will take the House and the Senate Amen. and move forward. Yeah. Because we, we yeah. choose life yes. and life abundantly. That's what life is. Well, maybe you're out there and you've never uh, started your journey with the Lord. And I want you to know it's really easy. It's as easy as one, two, three. You just acknowledge that you've sinned, which means miss the mark. We've all missed the mark. So acknowledge that and then ask Jesus to come into your heart and accept the payment that he made. A lot of people believe he died on the cross, but they haven't received it for their sin, and they, they haven't said, yes, I believe it covers me too. So just say that and receive him and begin to walk with him, and uh, it's, it's the most beautiful experience you'll ever have. Well, until we see you again next week, God bless you, and uh, thank you so much for joining